Are you listening? Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. All right, boys and girls, yeah. what's good with you? Your boys, BQ and TW here. You are now rocking with the Impact Lounge, the number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan. This is the first, the debut uh, episode of the Cool Factor Mailbag Show, where we'll just be strictly uh, answering listener questions and uh, commenting on listener comments. So the number one way that you can get involved with this is to join the Impact Lounge engagement group on Facebook. Uh, before we do one of these podcasts, I'm going to post uh, in there and we'll, we'll ask what are your questions for the show. And I'm going to take those questions and those will uh, be the priority. So today we're just going to go with the Facebook group. Uh, but in the future, we'll also factor in YouTube, Twitter, all that good ish, but the priority is going to come from the Facebook group. So you may hear some of the same people ask, answering the que- or excuse me, asking the questions, but that's the way it's going to be. So uh, if you want to get involved with that and join that conversation, hit up the Impact Lounge engagement group on Facebook, and we're going to keep it simple. We're going to do it. We're going to rock like that. So TW, you ready to do this? Let's do it, man. All right. So I'm going to kind of go in order here. Uh, of what we've got. Uh, make sure you guys, if it's your first time here, to subscribe, uh, thumbs up, comments, all that good stuff, and uh, let's get it. Let's get it popping. So, uh, first question here. Uh, this is from Mark Mello. He asks, "Can you see a revived Team Canada with Josh Alexander, Mike Bailey, and Giselle Shaw?" So, uh, I'll, I'll just kind of answer that first. I think. I think they've they've done a little bit of team team Canada teasing here and there, and then we also see that Scott Demore loves to be on screen. Uh, you know, some people feel that he's been teasing wanting to you know team up with Canadian wrestlers here and there, but I don't particularly see it. Uh, especially with a, I mean, that's kind of a, a random, uh, kind of a random threesome there. I, I would be very shocked if they uh, if the three of them teamed up in any capacity. Um, so first of all, I want to say it's good to hear from Mark Merrill. Um, Hello. You know, I think it's terrible. It's terrible what Brock Lesnar did, just, you know, taking your wife. Um, <laughs> but I really appreciate it. The Johnny B. Bag gimmick, I thought it was a little underrated back in your WCW days. And, you know, listen, man. Um, no, I'm just kidding. But <laughs> the, uh, no, I'm just kidding, man. Uh, uh, so as far as the Team Canada thing goes, um, is that something that could work? Yes, I think it's. I think it could. I think the impact gets very, um, they they get very like uh, kind of focused on a particular wave at a time. Like the Team Canada thing was popping up a lot when they were teasing the return of TNA stuff for that special they had planned around uh, WrestleMania weekend for 2020, and. Um, and, you know, so people's imagination started running wild and, like, that's cool and everything like that. But, like, right now, they don't seem to be on that, right? Like, um, now, 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 let me say this. If they were to do something where um, they just needed a vehicle for Josh Alexander, like, let's say they decided, hey, we like Moose as champion. We want to run this, this a little longer. Uh, we still need more time to really heat Josh Alexander up because even though... They've been focusing a lot of story on Josh Alexander. We all feel like that's where they're going. You hear the reactions when his music hits. There's no pop. Like, if we're just being honest about this, we're fans of Impact. We want to see Josh Alexander become a super-duper star. All of that. But when Josh Alexander's music hits, there's no pop. Tell me if I'm wrong about that. Am I wrong No, you're, you're not wrong. Absolutely not. Okay. So, so um, maybe if you want to do something, right, to try and – you know, create some heat, create some buzz around Josh Alexander. Maybe you do go to uh, giving him a faction, right? Giving him a faction, give him some goons, some people to do his dirty work. And maybe that's a way to kind of heat him up without putting the title on him. And then maybe turn him back babyface a year or so later. And, you know, then maybe people will be excited to see him uh, win the championship. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I think that that could be a thing, you know, you know, the idea of, you know, let, let's see how many Canadian wrestlers can we throw together. That's something you can do at any time. 
Um, does it seem like there's something they want to do right now? I don't think so. I mean, they, um, they're, they're, they're doing the honor no more thing, right? So they're on the, the, the ring of honor, uh, wave and yeah, I don't know. I just, I, I think like if I would need to see some sort of other hints that they were into similar type of gimmicks, right? Like, and, and again, when I say gimmick, I mean like the, this would fall into the TNA nostalgia bucket, right? Mm-hmm. And so I would need to see some sort of indication that they were doing other TNA nostalgia things um, in order to make me think they were likely to do something like this, which is a, again, a TNA nostalgia thing. So there's not a lot of that going on right now. So I don't see something like that coming down the pipe. So let's talk to Josh Alexander for a second. This is something that you and I really, really agree on. It's the theme song. You know, the, uh, yeah. it kind of worked for the North. It's more of a heel song. I don't think it's a good song personally. And I, I think, I think the themes are really hit and miss in impact. I think they're either really good or really bad. I, I think there's yeah, very yeah. few in the, in the middle personally. And We've talked about this a couple of times. Um, a good theme song, that first note, hit, note hits, it's got energy, you know who it is, and then you pop. And uh, I've mentioned this before. Eli Drake brought that up in an interview where he said, that's why my music starts with Eli Drake. Like, he, you know, I want you to know. And he, you know, he referenced the Stone Cold theme, the rock theme. You know, I want you to know the minute that hits, who's coming out so that you can react immediately, whether good or bad. And um, his isn't like that. It's, it, you almost can't even hear it. Uh, it, it just, you know, dark, ominous tones. Uh, it just sounds like noise. There's nothing, nothing big about his entrance. It's just not a star-studded entrance. And I, I even, even watching the Royal Rumble, it hit me a little bit more that um, how important that is because you saw... You know, I don't know the product that good, but I, I noticed the crowds would th- make a completely different reaction to those stars that when the music hit, they knew who it was immediately. Um, there were some who that you could tell they're staring at it like, I don't know who's coming out. You know, so I, I think it's important, but something like that could be a little faction or something. They, they got to heat them up because um, there's just right now that just I have good matches and I, I come out and. It just it doesn't really click for me, and it's it's weird because in the in the engagement group, I had made a post one day of who's your favorite Impact star, and and I would say eighty percent of the people had Josh Alexander in there. You know, they listed a handful of people. Eighty percent had like Josh Alexander in there, and, and it's, I was actually shocked to read that because as I've said, anytime I use a Josh Alexander lead in to content uh, to a podcast or I use his image, I get the lowest views. You know, right. you of anything so. Um, that kind of caught me off guard, but uh, I do think they need to to heat him up a little. I'm I'm actually surprised they didn't get his wife on screen more after what happened. You know, to just yeah, know, right? that sympathy a little. Woman. I, oh uh, yeah, like why why not get her? I mean, well, listen, I think the reason why is because they they don't want to pay her. Like that's it is what it is. Right? <laughs> the answers are usually dollars and cents, right? Like I mean, um, we as fans can all look at her and say, hey, this is somebody who I like to see on TV more, right? Um, and I'm sure they know that, right? But like, is it in the budget? You know, like that's, yeah. that's what it comes down to. Yeah, I think she'd be a good on-screen character. She's very, very attractive. Look, looks a little like my old lady. So, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, next one, uh, Colby Cooper. Uh, and I'm gonna go first on this one, so you have a, a minute to think. But and you might even you might have just answered it. But he's asking, is there anyone on the roster you turn? face or turn heel so i don't know that i would turn anyone heel uh but i'm gonna no actually i would turn someone heel uh i would turn decay heel i don't think in this current group they're good um i i don't it's hard because rosemary is a very popular character but ever since she kind of like became babyface rosemary it's lost it's lost some of the appeal to me because there was a lot of humor involved. Uh, she was doing a lot of comedy shit at one point with Ty Valkyrie that I, I personally hated. Uh, they did like the Real Housewives thing, and I, I thought it was very bad. And um, 
then she became then she started turning heel again. Uh, her and Ty Valkyrie, they were kind of like a babyface team, and then they because uh, they were doing all these silly skits, and then they started wrestling as heels for a very short period of time. Um, because you remember with that storyline, Rosemary didn't really like Taya. Taya was trying to say, oh, we're best friends. Uh, so it took a while for that to, to gel together. But by the time they, they kind of teamed up as the heel tag team, uh, Taya was out of the company very shortly after that. So they, she went back to Babyface because they reformed Decay. Now, Decay has really helped Crazy Steve because when he came back and he was he kind of tapped the menagerie gimmick a little bit, like it just... No one wants to see that. They want to see Decay Crazy Steve. Uh, but that's a that's a faction and that's a team in general that just has no freaking momentum whatsoever. Uh, her, Rosemary and and um, Havoc were the tag team champions. And you could just tell they were just placeholder champions. Everyone knew when they were going to face the influence at, or excuse me, the inspiration, that they were going to lose the belts. And they've never had any kind of rematch or they don't even pretend. And now they're linking him up some weird way with Johnny Swinger. So uh, I, I really think they're popular, and that's what the problem is, but they're just not as interesting when they're they're playing the good guy role. And the thing is, Johnny Swinger's not a... a he's actually a, technically a heel. I don't know. I, I, they're kind of presenting him like a baby face now because he wrestled Jonah. I don't really understand his character from a heel baby face standpoint, but um, they they could use a fire under their ass. And I, I think a like legitimate heel turn uh, would get him there. And then you know a couple other names that pop up. You know Scott Demore. I think he should just flat out turn heel because his he does good things for the company. But as far as an on screen character, he's super annoying. So I just would rather see him just turn heel so I can dislike him because he's a bad guy. And um, you know Lady Frost, another one that pops up just because I keep saying her heel work is really good. I don't think Impact's ever going to go that direction. But as far as a heel turning babyface, uh, I had to look up the roster, and there's nobody I'm looking at on there that I'd be like, yeah, this they could they could benefit from a babyface run because I think Impact does a good job with very clear for the most part. I, I know I brought up Johnny Swinger, but for the most part, they do a good job with clear cut baby faces and heels. It's not like uh, AEW where everyone's a freaking tweener and the the heels wrestle heels on a regular basis. You know, because they're trying to be cool heels. You know, Impact's never been like, hey, let's get that cool heel. Um, and then another name I guess in my head is Sammy Callahan. I much preferred him as a, as a heel, but we haven't seen him on TV in a while. When he returns, he'll be a baby face, I'm sure. Yeah, I think, like, when it comes to Decay, right, I think that was uh, an interesting pick because I feel like Decay is, woof, man, like... I think you need to inject a whole new character to kind of be the leader of that situation because the whole thing just feels dead in the water to me. Like it feels like just a, you know, uh, a placeholder. Like there's nothing, like I get what they're supposed to be, but there's, there's no teeth to it. Right. Like, like who do they beat? You know, who do they beat? Who do they threaten? Who do they scare? And you know, it's Johnny Swinger other than him. Right. So um <laughs> yeah yeah like I, I totally I, I totally I you know I don't, I don't know if, if a heel turn would would help them you know what I mean like they need to start beating some people like that's what it comes down to right like what are you conditioning your audience to see about a particular character now who could benefit from uh a heel turn or a face turn that's interesting that's interesting hmm um oof, that's a good one uh I'll give you a little you know, more time. Oh, okay. Go ahead. I, I was going to say, um, you know, you mentioned Lady Frost. I haven't seen any of her character work. So I don't know if she's a good heel or a baby face. I don't know if she's supposed to be a heel or a baby face, right? Like I, I haven't seen, um, you know, obviously the only time I really heard her talk was when she's like, oh, I'm so happy to be in the Ultimate X match. But like, yeah. you know, that wasn't, I, I guess if anything you could say that, that is a baby face promo, but like it didn't really give us any in-depth, you know, like look into who she is or, you know, what her motivations are or anything like that. So I can't really say for sure, you know, whether she is a healer or a baby face. Um, let's see who could possibly, you know, I mentioned Josh Alexander. And again, I think that, you know, because he's like this, this, this quiet assassin, he has this quiet assassin demeanor that can easily be a bad guy right easily be a bad guy but he could also easily be a good guy um but he could desperately use like i said some heating up 
Um, like the matches while he was X Division champion were great. Um, but I think they rushed it. You know what I mean? Like I said, I think they rushed it. And I think that um, I think it would have been fine if he would have got to take the title off Kenny Omega. But because he didn't, I it just, you know, it wiped his ass with the whole deal. Like it just it, it was in order to to turn somebody into like a top star based off of their great matches. I think it just it takes a long time of, you know, them putting matches on the books that people are talking about. And I thought Josh Alexander did it for like, what, four months, maybe, you know what I mean? Maybe six months. Um, and I just thought it just would have took, it would have took a longer time to really, to just really like, like while you're building Kenny Omega as this, you know, unstoppable force, you're also building this amazing challenger. And I think it's a great way to tell a story, but I think that it could have used a longer time to, to marinate, you know what I mean? Because Impact was in the the empty arena wrestling for a little bit it's way too long. Yeah. Um, and when I say way too long, like I don't mean way too long from like a safety standpoint. I mean way too long from the perspective of they were the last, you know, major wrestling show to bring fans back. And so the other products were looking way more lively than them. Um and they they felt behind the eight ball in that sense. And listen, the, the thing about wrestling is that you need crowd reaction to gauge how people feel about people, you know, how, how, how fans feel about wrestlers, because that's going to dictate how future audience is going, are going to react to wrestlers. So um, all of the Josh Alexander build, almost all of it was done in empty arenas. So you needed time to figure out how to manipulate that audience to get the reaction that you wanted. Cause in an empty arena world, yes, we can be like, yo, just watch the matches. Josh Alexander is dope. But once you bring fans back, his music hits and there's no pop. And you're like, oh, wait, is he a big deal? You know? Yeah. So, um, so, so, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm going to stick with that answer, man. Like, I think Josh Alexander could probably benefit from a heel run of, you know, again, if you're not going to do a whole lot of personality stuff, then just let him keep killing people. Let him keep killing people. And, um, and fans will eventually get behind you. You know, uh, I heard somebody say this. I can't remember who, who said this quote, but it's just like, if you stick around in the business long enough, nobody can boo you because they just, they know your act, you know, like right. they know your stuff and they're just, they're going to cheer you just because they know the act. So, um, so yeah, man, I mean, Josh Alexander could probably benefit from a nice evil heel run where he's just like terrorizing people, torturing people and being like, you know, a huge, you know, SOB. Um, and maybe that'll give him some time to, to have a little feud between Morrissey and Moose. So yeah, maybe, uh, maybe Josh Alexander would be the best person who could benefit from a heel turn. You know, you mentioned, you mentioned, uh, kind of rushing it because as you said, a majority of it happened in front of no people. So you have, you got to gauge audience reactions and they didn't have the opportunity to do that. So a good example, before he got injured, Rich Swan was going a direction where he, wasn't getting a clear push, but he was having such good matches that people were, you know, he kind of got that, uh, that cope. Remember when Kofi Kingston eventually got into the title picture? It's because he, you know, wrestled in the, uh, what, 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 did, what did they have? A gauntlet match? Yeah, it was a gauntlet match on SmackDown, and then it was the Elimination Chamber. Right. So around that time, th th this was right after that, Rich Swan had wrestled the, you know, the impact style gauntlet uh, where he had a really good match with Moose and Tessa Blanchard. I don't, I think Tessa Blanchard beat, no, no, no. She beat Brian Cage at the end, but she had a really good match with Moose and, and a couple dudes to where you just felt like, Oh crap, he's, he's on his way up, you know, and it wasn't forced or anything. It happened really, really natural. Now, by the time he won the title, it was forced because they just continued with the plans instead of, you know, building them back up first. Um, I, I will say real quick, I think a, a decent babyface turn, now that I think about it, would be Sue Young. Um, if you think about like the Abaddon character in AEW, they rarely use her, um, but she's a, a com comparable gimmick, but she's not a bad guy. She's, uh, I think she might have been at the beginning, but you know, the last couple times they've used her has been strictly as a, a babyface, you know, when she wrestled Britt Baker and all that. And it's, it's one of those gimmicks that you don't use on a regular basis. But, uh, you know, they come out of nowhere, the music hits and, uh, you know, whoever's a knockouts champion or whoever the heel knockout is that's saying, 
you know, talking like they're they're the shit on the mic and, you know, give me any opponent. Like she she's a good uh that, that kind of cane roll that you just the music hits and it's like, oh crap, you know, I just got myself into this feud uh with this crazy person. So um I don't know. So we'll see. Um so James Bryan asks once slash if COVID restrictions are lifted and global travel becomes easier, where should impact visit? So uh, he's talking global travel. Travel. Uh, I'm not thinking that big at the moment. I'm thinking about the United States and the spots that really stood out to me when they were doing Impact Plus shows were Ohio and uh, San Antonio. Those were the ones that I felt had the loudest, most engaged crowds. And then I, I thought the uh, they did a showdown in Motown or something like that. They did a, a Michigan one that I. I thought, I, I thought it looked good, uh, just the way they set up the ring and everything with the with the people, but I thought it sounded pretty decent too. It wasn't on the level of San Antonio and Ohio, but uh, I, I thought it was good, and I think uh, they would do well there. But but I think San Antonio, Ohio, those are the two places in places in the U.S. that I'm like, yo, uh, I would be doing television here uh, instead of you know the. I mean, we hear the Florida taping so far. The, the The crowd is engaged, but it's not necessarily a large crowd. And then we don't know what to expect with the Bayou, too. I think you were looking up those tickets the other day. They weren't looking good at the moment. You know, who really knows? But any places that uh, stand out to you? Yeah, um, I think before the quarantine, they had a really good crowd in Atlanta. Um, and... Uh, yeah, they said the good. number one place I think they need to get back to is that St. Clair College area because they had really good crowds there. Um, I think I could be wrong about this, but I, I think that's a territory that Scott Demore was booking with his own wrestling promotion. Is that true? To my knowledge, yes. Yeah, and so that makes sense. So he has like a a, a base there, you know, a fan base, you know, whatever that comes out, and they they know the promotion or whatever. Like that's great. Um, but they were getting really good crowds there. They were getting really good crowds there. The crowds were loud, and it looked like they were taping in, like, a, I was going to say a small college. Yes, they were taping in a small college, and um, and the way that they had the bleachers set up in front of the rim, like you said, it was like a, like a basketball gymnasium, um, but, like, I, I, I like that seating with, like, fans sitting on, like, bleacher-style seating. It just makes it look so much more full, and it looks, it, it gives, like, an arena feel. Um, and so, like, I think that's the place they need to get back to, you know, if they still have maintained that fan base, then um, I thought those crowds were excellent for Impact. So I think they need to get back there ASAP. Yeah, they sounded really good. They looked good. It was the old Impact Zone in Orlando style of, I mean, really, all the TNA style, the way that they filmed. It just looked a lot better. And I, know, I understand why they kind of got away from that that angle, because in Orlando, me included, uh, a lot of us were too focused on the, the fans in the front row sitting on their hands or um, showing absolutely no reaction to what was going on. So I remember there was a time where I was like, yo, we got to change this camera angle. And that, the one that they currently use was the one that I said they needed to do because that was kind of what Ring of Honor was doing. And uh, But I think we're to the point now that it would benefit to go back to the other style of uh, camera work. You know, it worked for what it was, especially it worked during the empty arena wrestling. But now we want to see the people in the crowd. So, right, them, exactly. Yeah. I think like they really need to see people in the crowd and they need to see, you know, like, again, it's about like training your audience, right? For training the next audience by what they see on the show that they're watching right now. So, um, so yeah, so I think like they need to like make it a point to show create create some sort of angle that looks like there's fans there right like again you guys all know like um after once attendance started declining in the orlando impact zone they started going to the method of putting all the fans on one side or like three quarters around the ring like i remember it used to be there used to be fans all around the ring on all sides this used to feel that way i remember um 
watching an old TNA pay-per-view and Jeff Hardy came out and was like, you know, he would walk around the ring, uh, around the ring, give everybody high fives. And I remember one time Rick Ross was sitting at ringside and, um, you know, it was really cool. But like, I also noticed that, you know, like I said, once the, you know, attendance started declining, like noticeably, they started just putting all the fans kind of on one side. So um, to me, again, it seems like an easy solution to just, just kind of go back to shooting where the fans are, put the fans. And by the way, you know who does that right now? WWE. WWE does that right now. I'm pretty sure AEW w- uh, w- would do that too. Uh, either they would or have, or <clears throat> matter of fact, I've seen people send in pictures of, um, of AEW shows where, where half the arena is tarped off. So like, it's a, it's a, it's a smart thing to do, right? Because again, you uh, across from the hard camera, it still looks like you have mostly full fence stands. And again, that creates the illusion that you have a full crowd, right? And, um, and that's what you want. That's what you want your wrestlers to feel. That's what you want the show to feel like when they watch it at home. So Liam McAuliffe, he asked, um, this kind of ties into it a little bit because any news thoughts about a UK return for impact? Uh, sorry, my screen. He said no TV deal, no Pluto TV presence after being announced, no chance of a UK tour It's formerly the largest impact market and paraphrasing here, but he's saying for some reason there's zero presence. So I, we, him and I talked a little bit deeper about this cause I had to ask. And uh, I think I don't know if they had different plans out there, but I kind of got the impression he was under the impression that when they were coming to Pluto TV, it was going to be actual episodes of impact, uh, much like what we see on access TV or what we see on YouTube. And then uh, it ended up just being old TNA stuff, which that's what it is here in the, in the U S Pluto (laughs) TV, you know, you turn it on, it's, you know, victory road from this and this, and here's Bobby Roode wrestling, you know, They love their library, so they make all these digital deals, but it's always, here's the library. They they just find places to put the library. That's that's what it boils down to. And he was saying even, you know, AEW and WWE are are on, I don't think he said AEW, because I think they're, uh, I don't know what they're doing. I don't think they're doing anything in the UK. I remember Cody said it was going to be big, and it was nothing, but but WWE is on free TV excuse me, free TV out there now too. And uh, th- this was a really strong market for Impact. The last time they were there, I think it was an Impact Plus show. I didn't pr- I didn't watch it, so I, don't, I can't speak on that one. But I do remember the Pop TV tapings that they did out there. Uh, I mean, huge crowd, loud. The, the show looked and felt great. I shouldn't, it didn't sound super good because, you know, back then they, they just compressed the crap out of the audience back then. I remember Shane Helms was on a podcast and he goes, yo, the, the pop for EC3 was so huge and I couldn't wait for people to see it on TV. He's like, and then the show aired on TV and we couldn't hear the, the crowd. Wow. So, you know, uh, so he kind of said something we, like we said, he goes, I don't know if it's a budget thing and how they mic the audience or what. He's like, you know, but that place came unglued. That's one um, of the things that always like kind of consistently amazes me about this company is like, do the people who work in production not understand what it should sound like? You know, like, yeah. like, the, the, like, the, and again, I, you know, I talked a couple of weeks ago about how um, it's probably a very good thing to have Josh Matthews as a producer now because he knows what it sounds like at its highest level. He knows what it looks like at its highest level. Right. And, and when I say it, I mean like a, a quality, wrestling television production so the hope is that he can apply that standard to the production of impact wrestling just like you said if you are in the arena and here's a, an example right when i so a lot of fans will post their videos from like ringside and <clears throat> there's been a lot of fan videos that i've watched from ringside where the crowd sounds way better than it sounds on tv for these moments and it's just so crazy to me because again i cannot stress enough man like people react to people mimic what they see right like um 
oh my god i think it was i think it was um and i apologize if i made this reference on the show before but the if anybody remembers the 2015 royal rumble right it was in philadelphia john cena came out and the philly crowd was singing john cena sucks john cena sucks and every wwe crowd after that until john cena left was singing john cena sucks john cena sucks every time he came out people mimic what they see on tv okay like the audiences that watch uh nxt okay they um they they mimic the reactions that they see those crowds doing um and you know the the singing and the the chanting and like all of that stuff and so they want to do that when they go to the shows and so if i'm producing a wrestling show i want to try and make sure my crowd is doing that right you want your crowd to be doing that because you want the fans at home to say i want to go to the show and do that too yeah and um i know we got away from the question here but i'm, I'm going to follow up on that same thing with the jericho cruise when they started singing jericho song and now every time jericho song hits the crowd is singing it um even, and even like on a much smaller scale the nwa when question mark he passed away last year but he was a tag team partner with aaron stevens who we know is aaron rex damian sando and aaron stevens was a heel and he would walk around the crowd and put his arms up like uh you know celebrating himself and the crowd would boo him and the question mark who got over big time he was a mass wrestler his name was josephus but he was a mass wrestler he would walk behind him put his arm up and the crowd would would cheer it was very similar to the dynamic of the Miz and Miz Dow um, in WWE a while back. But because that happened on one episode, people started doing it and min- mimicking it and the, and the gimmick and the team really got over. And right now, what we see and hear is nothing. We hear silence. We don't see people reacting. Um, they've tried to, the, the, the commentators have tried to get people to, oh, sing Eddie Edwards' song when he, when he comes out. You know, they're, they're kind of copying some of the stuff other crowds are doing, but they're not creating their own, um, their own original, I don't, I don't know exactly how to word what I'm trying to say, but because we can't see or hear anything that's going on, there's, there's nothing to mimic, nothing to carry over. So when you just hear silence, you're probably just going to think, okay, that's how I got to be at an impact show. Right. Well, Impact's not, they're not branding it, right? Like, like um, when we started noticing the Jericho uh, singing it, like, you know, there was so much, so much like videos online of random fans singing Judas and all of this stuff. And um, again, like, you know, I never thought Eddie Edwards theme song was any type, any type of big deal thing, but the crowd who showed up to Skyway Studios, they did that organically. You know what I mean? And that's stuff you need to harness. You know, like, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't want to get into complaint mode. But, um, but like, they just, they just, they, they, they missed the boat. Like, that was something that was happening organically. They should have, you know, harnessed it, pushed it, promoted it. And, and like you said, encouraged more people to do it. Um, you know, instead of just like kind of leaving it to chance. And, you know, to go back to what the, what the question was saying with the UK, for, for whatever reason, there's not a presence there right now, which is really, really weird because that was a market that was very strong for them. And they actually tapped into the, the, the market of signing UK wrestlers before it was popular. I mean, I remember people online complaining, why does MCAP Impact insist on signing all these wrestlers from the UK? And then two years later, the UK scene got super, super hot. And then you know, uh, WWE doused the flames, um, you know, by trying to, trying to take it over, but they sounded really, you know, uh, they always sounded and looked good on screen. And even here in the U S when we knew they were going to the UK, like we were excited for those tapings, you know, that's a completely different country, but we were excited to, to see them. I would have to believe they're trying to get back in that market in one way, shape or form. Like there's, you know, I don't know for sure, but I, I would be shocked that they were just completely ignoring that. Oh, we haven't been there in forever. We don't have a TV deal out there, um, but we have YouTube. So that's, that's what matters, you know, because right. that was, that was one of their more lucrative TV deals also. 
you know, I, I, I they always talk about we're in this many countries. Man, I, I would bet a lot of those countries you can add them up and they're not going to add up to what they made from the UK. So uh, I don't I don't know what what's going on with that, but it we definitely want to see it happen soon. And, you know, I would like to see them hopefully one day again, maybe tap into the uh, the uh, the wrestling scene out there. Maybe maybe bring some wrestlers, you know, back from that era, but not that era, but that area. So. Well, another another since you mentioned that, another like side effect that we probably haven't uh, mentioned as far as um, Impact's presence in the UK is the WWE starting the NXT UK brand. Um, I think when they did that, they probably killed a lot of the indie scene in the UK um, because they, you know, similar like to like how they did with America. They signed up a bunch of the best talent and made them exclusive to WWE. And so, like, it's, it's, that's so stupid to kill the indies. You know what I mean? Like, but, you know, like, whether you like it or not, like, I know you have your own method for, you know, creating stars or whatever, but you have your method and the indies are also, you know, again, they're also being like a farm system for you, you know, where people are, people are honing their skills so they can get on WWE TV. Right. They're not like doing it for nothing. Their goal isn't to perform in the smallest indie venue. So like, I, I don't know, man, WWE is, is a head scratcher. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, whatever. All right. And K infinity, he asked, how can, and this is a good one. How can impact get in the good graces of the wrestling media? So I think that there's been improvement on this over the years, but the way that I would get in their good graces, it's, it is the hot girl. It's the ugly guy, hot girl concept to where, you know, there's these dudes out there that you're like, you know, they're not good looking. And they're like, well, how do I, how do they get these girls? You know? Uh, and it's, it's that guy that knows how to be an asshole and knows how to, you know, ignore them um, in the club, you know, or ignore them in the bar to, to talk to their other friends, but not them. And then the girl wants to get in on the conversation and there's a lot of media outlets out there that really trashed impact for a long time. But then when they do these, these, uh, the, the media, when they do the, the, uh, press passes and, you know, they've called it different things over the years, these conference calls, you hear a lot of those media outlets on the, on the call that was just trashing the crap out of them, you know, uh, uh, a month ago. And which, which is odd because I'm, I'm not, really welcome on those. And I, you know, I, I don't know if my words sting a lot harder for some reason than, you know, <laughs> some of these other sites. I, I don't really know. But I think, you know, you're, you're going out there and you're, you're trying to, you know, the, oh, the, these outlets are, are saying how bad our product is and that we suck and they're, you know, joining in on the LOL TNA thing. And then we, we go running to them when we need podcast, you know, uh, interviews to be done on podcasts and on websites. And I really think if they, um, if they really ignored a lot, a lot of that, uh, found a lot of podcasts and websites that they felt good about and really focused their energy towards them. I think some of these other sites would come, would want to get in on the action, you know, um, but there is some improvement because the product is that much better right now. There was, you know, God, in the, I, I'm, I'm just thinking that, you know, the TNA days, even before, right before it came impact, I mean, they were just getting destroyed in the dirt sheets, you know, ever since the, the whole Dixie Carter era, I mean, they were getting destroyed. I think there's a little more respect now for the people who run the company, as far as Scott Demore and, uh, you know Don Callis at one point I think there's more respect for those guys so I think they're a little bit more in the good graces but I, I personally like that concept where you know hey you don't you you want to talk crap about our company and what we're doing and downplay everything that we do we're, we're just going to leave you out of we're, we're, we're going to pretend like we don't care what you think and and you know what do you think, though, about getting uh, in the good graces of the wrestling media? Because they are they are very influential. You know, yeah, the- I think that um, I think what what Impact could do to try and um, 
try and help that situation is what one of the ideas I had is doing like a media scrum. I love the idea of um, of I've been, I think I thought of this for a long time is like just giving people access, like give the um, you know like it's, it's opening your doors and saying come on and you know for better or worse you know uh, critique us, grade us, you know let's let's uh, let's 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 have a you know let's have an honest look at ourselves. Um, so you know invite the you know, have like a media section, you know what I mean? Invite, invite Meltzer, invite, you know, uh, you know, Mike Johnson, invite, uh, you know, invite everybody. Um, and then, like I said, so in, invite them to the, to the show. Um, and then after the show, um, have, like I said, have like a media scrum where, um, where everybody just gets a chance to just ask questions to the wrestlers, you know what I mean? Like in kayfabe, hopefully. Um, and, you know, and, and, and I think that will be just fun content because there's so much, you know, there's, there's so much, so much media space and, 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 and all of that. Um, I just, I think that people need unique content, you know, and I think that's a way that impact could help these media companies create unique content. And I think it would be, I think it'd be huge for them. I think, um, I think that like, you know, just giving giving uh, media companies or, 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 or media outlets this opportunity to have um, have this kind of unique content, I think that they would, you know, I think they would look favorably upon Impact for doing that. You know, and even when in the media, when the WWE has some kind of story that's looming over them, one thing that they've always been excellent on is creating their own positive news. To where these sheets can't help but to talk good about them because of something they're doing. Uh, you know, you could have the most negative story, and so or some wrestler comes out and speaks against the company, and then all of a sudden they're like, you know, the May Young Classic is is coming. They, like they have a habit, right. of, you, you know, <laughs> so where they're able to completely drown that out uh, and get people excited. And I think often two times in the in, uh, the media impact and, and in the TNA days as well, just allowed the negative news to just take over. You know, they didn't know how to follow it up with, well, here's something amazing we're doing, something amazing we got going on. They just, they just didn't know how to cover it up, you know, how, how, to, how to change the narrative to where these sites couldn't help but to talk good about them. They just, you know, they just let the negative, the negative stuff linger for too long. Yeah. But, but right, I think right, that's, right. They let, 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 that's a great point. Let the negative stuff linger. And again, we talk about this a lot. You know, one of the things that Jeff Jarrett was absolutely excellent about is creating some sort of positive news. And I think they just got to get, you know, get used to doing that. Get used to uh, being being um, some sort of po being something that these media companies see as positive. You know, like there's something they see as hey. Um, you know, impact is gonna give us good content. So, you know, I don't know, whatever. So we're gonna like, we're gonna appreciate impact more. I don't know, something like that. But I think that um, like just in a nutshell, like that's it. You know, they gotta be something that these companies see as, as a positive thing, something that they view in a positive light. But listen, um, BQ, you are gonna handle the rest of these questions with the fans. I actually have to hop off. I have another obligation I have to get to. Um, but thank, thank you, everybody, for sending in the questions. We are going to, uh, you know, keep like like BQ said, prioritizing the the stuff from the from the from the impact um, engagement group in on Facebook. So keep sending in the questions, and uh, you know, if you like it, if you love it, you hate it, whatever. Like you know, like I said, just keep sending them, and you know, we'll keep knocking out your questions. Oh right, uh, yeah, sounds good, man. All right, man. All right, peace. So there's a couple other questions I got here that I'm going to get into, and the first one, Randy, Randy Adams asked, "Do you think that Larry D might be brought back in some capacity other than comedy?" So he answered. He asked this question before Larry D stated that he requested his release from Impact Wrestling. So I, I actually have talked to Larry D. Real, real briefly, I will be interviewing him here soon. 
And I talked about on the, you know, the regular Cool Up Factor podcast that I will be getting back into the interview space, but that I'll be interviewing wrestlers uh, departing the company. Uh, once the, once they, with Larry, he has to be granted his relief first. So we're not enable, able to do an interview because the Impact wrestlers can't just agree to podcast interviews anymore. They got to run through the company and it's um, more of a headache than I, I really care to deal with. But he's he has agreed to come on and we're going to talk some real shit. You know, we're, it's not going to be fluff where, hey, you know, watch Impact this week. And, you know, and that's one of the reasons I've kind of pulled back on doing some interviews with the, the stars because there is a box that they have to be inside of. And there's a box that I have to be inside of when we're conducting these podcasts. So now that I'll be focusing my energy towards people who have left the company or who have been asked to leave the company. We can really get some real answers on what they think for their careers and what they perceived good and bad to be going on behind the behind the screens or behind the behind the sheet. So, uh, so look forward to that. So I'll be talking to Larry D and Rohit here very soon. So, but as far as Larry D, this this is what I said after Wrestle House after Who Shot Bravo. I said it back then, and I, I feel that it proved to be true. And I said, you can't bring Triple XL back from this. You can't bring Larry D back from this. And uh, they gave AC Romero too much mic time. I say mic time. I mean talking segments. And he's someone who should be seen, not heard. You know, uh, so I think that hurt him quite a bit. The Lawrence D character could have worked as a comedy wrestler and been semi-successful i don't mean semi-successful like win matches i just mean semi-successful as i think it would have been entertaining we only saw it one time and it was for a throwaway match with rohit where they i think josh alexander came down and ruined the match him or morrissey came down ruined the match uh almost immediately and we never got to see that play out some people had said oh well larry d would be great and violent by design probably but they don't need another member uh, when they added Rhino, it, it watered it down quite a bit. I would only add a female to Violent, Violent by Design at this point. I wouldn't add a, another wrestler. So it is it is unfortunate for Larry D that he just never really got to see things out the way that he wanted to. So when I talk to him, we're, we're going to be able to get into that and see what he envisioned for himself. And, uh, you know, Adam Thorstow, my, my guy from Reno Scum, he's another one I'll be talking to. Uh, we just, you know, we we agreed on this a while back, just haven't had the opportunity. Uh, I know he has some thoughts about how they were used and put in matches that meant nothing, that did nothing for them, where they were just put out there to lose instead of uh, to have competitive matches. So, I think Larry D fell into that as well. So I, I don't think see him coming back though. I think if he asked for his release, it's because he values himself a lot more than the company valued him and you know him and ac and you know then going back to rohit winning the global forge i mean there's these guys that like you've won an impact contract you're being presented with an impact contract and what does that amount to you know rohit did a lot more with his time but guys like ac romero and larry d like they got their name out a little bit but what did they do that was that anyone cared about on screen so it sucks because I, I liked Larry D instantly uh, upon upon watching him. Um, Minor Lopez said, could the partnership with WWE be better than what we saw in AEW after Mickey's involvement in the Rumble? Over 44,000 fans got to witness the Impact Knockouts champion and actually got cheered. And then they said, I heard there was a TNA chant for Rude and Styles when they faced off. Yeah, there, there definitely was. I had to rewind because I couldn't make out what they were saying, but I was pretty sure that's what they were saying. So I thought that was uh, pretty cool. They had a nice little stare down that almost acknowledged their past. And yeah, there was over 44,000 fans. I wanted to go to the Royal Rumble. If you guys don't know, I live outside of St. Louis. I live in Illinois, but I live outside of St. Louis. I actually work in St. Louis. So I wanted to go to it uh, because the tickets weren't that expensive. I was going to take my son, but uh, my old lady didn't want me to to leave that night. So uh, I didn't watch it, but I did watch it on TV. You know, it's a, it's a fun event to watch, even if you don't particularly care for WWE. But Mickey got the biggest pop of the night, in my opinion. You know, I, I guess 
no, she didn't get the biggest pop of the night because Randy Orton's pop in St. Louis is, is crazy. I've been there for that live, so I, I know for a fact. But Mickey James got a really, really good reaction. And I don't think there's a partnership with WWE. I think they needed bodies. I think Ben said, well, call Mickey James. Oh, well, she's the Impact Knockouts champion. Who? Get her anyway. You know, um, I, I wouldn't really look into it too much. I don't think there's... You know, because then after that, people, oh, maybe Moose is going to be in the Royal Rumble. You know, that wasn't going to happen. Uh, there's no way in hell that was going to happen. There was no way in hell any of the males from the roster were going to be in it. This was different because Mickey James has a history with WWE. Like, if not, Deanna Peraza was a knockout champion. Well, she has a history too, but, I mean, let, let's be honest. She's not seen as a WWE legend. You know, but if it was Deanna, the Knockouts champion, or, or Tasha Steeles, like they would have been invited to come do the Royal Rumble. It wasn't about her being the Knockouts champion. It was because it was Mickey James. So, you know, because they used in the, you know, granted she wasn't used in the same capacity, but they grabbed Melina from, you know, and she's working with the NWA right now. But the involvement with WWE, I think, pays off exponentially more than it does with AEW when they cut the deal to use some Hardy material for whatever documentary they were doing or whatever video piece, you know, at the end they said, you know, subscribe to the global wrestling network. And they did their, you know, they did record uh, subs for that, for a single day because of just at the end saying for more, whatever, sign up with the global wrestling network, just a little blurb at the end, you know? So the WWE audience and the WWE as a whole is very, very powerful and it, it would be a lot more beneficial, everything that they do. We saw the big, the, the big uh, viewership jump. There was a big viewership jump when Kenny Omega appeared, because AEW does have a big audience, but then it went right back down to normal. You know, it, it stayed a little higher for a little bit, but for the most part, it, you know, before we knew it, it was back down to normal. And you know, we might experience that a little bit with Impact now, but the product's so much better right now than it was back then. Because I've said it before, the empty arena stuff to me wasn't good. It, it, it was depressing for me to watch. Now what they're doing is a lot of fun. I think more people are going to stick around for it. But anything they can do with the WWE is going to be more powerful than anything they do with AEW. It doesn't matter if, if the entire roster invades AEW Dynamite. It's not going to be the same as, as being in the good graces of WWE. And WWE almost has to give you permission not you, but the WWE universe, the audience, they almost have to give you permission to like another company. And by bringing Mickey James on and letting her have hardcore country and walk out with a knockouts championship, that was their way a little bit in, in some people's eyes of, Hey, WWE just told me it's okay to watch impact. And we saw the big viewership jump. And I guess, you know, behind the scenes, Impact was saying that, that this was their biggest concern was the, the TV because digital numbers were going up, which to me, that's, you know, my opinions, that, that's empty. When you're, uh, you know, when Bobby Roode has a match on Raw and then you post your Bobby Roode clips, that, that's all empty views. That means nothing. But they are getting their digital media numbers up. Uh, the, the, the YouTube subscription model to do, and I think is really good. Uh, I enjoy watching on there much more than on the app or access TV. Uh, I like doing the YouTube thing. Um, but yeah, I, I will say if they're able to, to partner at all with WWE, um, you know, but there are, but there are improvements. There are improvements. The, the TV was the last thing they needed to see a spike. I guess overseas viewership was up too, you know, but the U.S. TV was the last thing they needed for some kind of momentum, and they're kind of getting it just from, you know, hooking up with WWE for a little bit. So if they're able to do anything with them at all, they would benefit from it greatly. So there's a question here from Pablo Fernandez, and I'm going to be honest with you. We're going to answer this next week uh, when TW is on with me because this is – you know, this, this is a deep one, but he asks in your mind, if you had a power of the company or if you had power of the company, how would you structure it in the short term to lead up to long-term payoffs? So that's big. That's not something I can just read off and, and give you an answer for. So that's what, uh, we're going to sit on that one for a week and, and answer it then. And as I said at the top of the show, and, and TW just said, if you want to get involved to ensure that you're in, involved, and it doesn't mean we're going to answer every question, but there's going to be a high priority 
Uh, if you don't ask a good question, we're not going to answer nonsense. Um, but the Impact Lounge engagement group on Facebook is the place to be to do that. Uh, and we will continue to scrub YouTube and Twitter as well. So I don't want you to think we don't want you to leave comments on YouTube because uh, we will we will still scrub those. So for the next episode we do, we'll we'll probably check the comments on a couple YouTube videos because uh, last week's episode did really well for us. It was our, our most listened to show in a long time, um, which, which is great because it was a reflection of what Impact is, is doing. Like, you know, that's something here at the lounge that we under, we go through as well. The better Impact is, the better our numbers are. You know, it is very much reflective of what they're doing. Um, so during the pandemic, when, you know, the pandemic stopped wrestling, when the numbers were down, our numbers were down too. So we're going to continue doing this. Hope you dig it. Uh, we'll probably do it weekly. It might be, you know, we might skip a week here and there, but, you know, hopefully this will help us knock down the time on the regular Cool Factor podcast a little bit. So I am your boy, BQ. Thanks for checking out the Cool Factor mailbag show. We'll talk to you next guy next time. Peace.